and we've got some really nice weather headed our way over the next few days. A sneak peek of your weekend forecast coming up. Live from case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. New this noon, police investigating a deadly accident on Southeast Military and Goliad. Officers tell us it happened just before 10 this morning. Police say when they arrived, the accident involved a city vehicle and public works vehicle. Police say the victim was run over and was pronounced dead at the scene. It's a developing story. We're going to bring you the latest as more information becomes available. We will also have more on KSAT.com. The search is on for a 16-year-old girl reported missing this morning. Police say that Hidea Darlene Kennedy was last seen getting into a vehicle on Monday. Police say it happened in the 4600 block of East Houston Street. Officers tell us that she was wearing a red hoodie, a red shirt, and tan pants. Police tell us that Kennedy is diagnosed with an intellectual disability, believed that her disappearance may post a threat to her own health and her own safety. If you have any information regarding her whereabouts, you're asked to contact SAPD at 210-207-7660. BCSO deputies are saying a 13-year-old is at fault of a wrong way crash followed by a chase. Deputies say they stopped the teenager who was driving on the wrong way driving the wrong way on Highway 16 in South Bear County overnight. BCSO officials tell us that the chase started when a deputy noticed the vehicle was driving recklessly. Deputies tell us that's when the teen crashed into another car. No injuries were reported. Unclear if the teen was taken into custody. A driver facing charges this noon after police say he critically injured two people in an overnight crash. Officers tell us it happened just after midnight in the 7200 block of Wurzbach Road. Police say a red Ford Focus was pulling out of a parking lot when it was T-boned. Police tell us the driver was speeding, hit the driver's side of the Ford. Officers tell us emergency crews had to cut off the door to rescue three people inside. Two people were taken to the hospital. They are in critical condition. The driver is now facing charges of DWI. With just a few clicks and in less than five minutes, one Helotus woman says she's able to register anyone qualifying for COVID-19 vaccine. Karen James says the process came easy to her, which is why for the past month she's been helping to register senior citizens who are at a disadvantage due to the digital registration process. Alicia Barrera met up with Karen and has more on what the key is to registering quickly. Good afternoon. Well, there are some secrets or strategies, if you will. Karen James says it's best to use your laptop instead of your smartphone and then to continue hitting that refresh button, even if it says that all slots are full. And probably the best strategy is to be quick at inputting your information. In her spare time, James, a mom of twins, is registering senior citizens for the COVID-19 vaccine. She shares it all started with registering herself as she has a chronic lung condition. From then, it was family and friends and and thanks to Facebook, now it includes total strangers bringing her total number to more than 400 people. I think it's um, knowing how to get around on the web, um, knowing how to navigate and maneuver and being just having a fast clicker finger, really. You have to have fast fingers. You just really have to be fast. Because you have to get to that third screen. When you get to the third screen, you're in. We got in contact with some of the people Karen helped who say they're so thankful for her work. They had been trying for weeks, some for more than a month to register their loved ones, but Karen got it all done in a matter of minutes. If you need help registering for the vaccine, you can reach out to Karen at the email listed on your screen. That's a little COVID blessing at gmail.com. And as of this morning, Karen James tells us that she's registered registered a total of 439 people and she hopes to continue registering even more. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. I love it. The third screen. That's what you're looking for. All right, local health officials now reporting 186 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Four more people, though, have died from the virus as well. Mayor Ron Nuremberg said the seven-day moving average now at 187 cases a day. So far, more than 378,000 people in Bear County have received their first vaccine dose, and more than 210,000 are fully vaccinated. 
Close to 75 million Americans now have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. And that's over 28% of the adult population. As ABC's Mary Alice Parks tells us, experts still urging caution, saying we're not out of the woods yet. Nationwide, more coronavirus vaccines now available to more Americans. This mega vaccine site at City Field in Queens, New York, averaging 2,000 shots per day and hoping to expand. Alaska and Mississippi now allowing anyone over the age of 16 to sign up. Six more states announcing they too will expand eligibility to anyone over 16 in the coming weeks. This nurse in Missouri excited to think about enjoying a normal summer as she rolled up her sleeve. I'd really like to go on a, on a cruise vacation this summer. But experts worry too, many Americans are still hesitant. Just because people can get shots, will they? A recent poll finding nearly half of Republican men would choose not to get vaccinated. The director of National Institutes of Health telling George Stephanopoulos he wishes he could take the politics and rumors out of the equation. I think people have been confused by a lot of information that you can find on social media. Getting vaccinated is not just about yourself. It's about your family, your community. His team leading an interfaith event at the National Cathedral this week with clergy from around the nation's capital, hoping these faith leaders will inspire their flocks. Former President Trump on Fox News 2 this week, encouraging his supporters to get vaccinated. It's a great vaccine. It's a safe vaccine and it's uh, something that works. Cases are down overall across the country, but as more contagious variants spread, these 15 states have seen an uptick in their daily case average. Six have seen an increase by at least 25 percent in the last week raising alarm bells about whether communities are opening up too soon. Dr. Anthony Fauci warning today that if states pull back health measures too quickly, the nation could be headed towards a fourth wave of cases. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. The upcoming Brooks Virtual Job Fair will have more than 30 employers who are going to be looking to hire. One of those employers is Oaken Business Process. The global company hopes to hire close to 100 people for their San Antonio headquarters. Stephen Gavasso spoke to one employee who shares how she has been able to grow the company despite a challenging year. That's the most horrible feeling, wondering if you're going to be able to pay for the little groceries that you can find. Alyssa Gossiter recalls those first frightening moments when the COVID-19 pandemic hit last spring. Gossiter says she was already searching for a job, but was running into obstacles. A lot of the places that I had applied with and even interviewed with kind of put a hold on things. Um, so I was kind of just stuck in this waiting pattern. One of those places was Oaken Business Process. The Czech Republic based company helps other companies with operations and workflow. Right now they have three locations and in 2018 they planted their U.S. headquarters here in the Alamo City. Gossner was eventually hired as a customer service agent last May and in less than a year she worked her way up to a team lead. It's a blessing to have been given this opportunity in the middle of the pandemic. Oaken is hoping for more of those success stories. Right now, 100 people are employed in San Antonio, but they hope to bring 80 to 100 more people on board to fill customer service and team lead positions at their location off Kennedy Hill Drive. The first few hundred people that we're hiring are going to help to shape and create the ideal workplace. Gosto encourages others to take advantage of the upcoming Brooks Virtual Job Fair. She says Oaken is more than just being a part of a team. Oaken has been like family. Now, the Brooks Virtual Job Fair is a collaboration with Workforce Solutions Alamo, Goodwill SA, and SA Works. Now, don't forget, it's happening next Wednesday. You can head over to our website at ksat.com to learn more. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio Book Festival has announced its 2021 author lineup and event schedule, which includes nearly 200 local, regional, and national authors. This year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the festival will take place entirely online. It'll start April 9th, run through the 11th. It allows for people outside of San Antonio to join in all the fun. It is a free, family-friendly event that showcases both first-time and established prominent writers. The book festival will offer more than 100 sessions for participants of all ages. For more information, visit ksatcommunity.com. Still to come this half hour, the Spurs pick up a nice win on the road. They're rolling out there. Highlights coming up. And after the break, we're going to take a look at a new study that shows the number of crashes in San Antonio and which roads are the most dangerous.
We've got some traffic authority coverage for you now. Studies showing a major pattern about 2020. It was certainly a unique year when it comes to traffic and crashes. While the number of crashes actually dropped, the number of fatalities on San Antonio road raids went up. Our traffic authority reporter Samuel King has more on the study, which also looked at the most dangerous intersections in Bear County in 2020. The data analysis firm 1.21 Interactive took all of the crashes reported on Bear County roadways in 2020 and crunched the numbers. It found the most dangerous intersection was the one behind me, Highway 151 at Loop 410. It had the most injuries from crashes and the most serious injuries. That's followed by Bandera Road and Loop 1604, Loop 1604 and 281, Loop 410 in San Pedro, and I-10 at Loop 1604. Attorney Alex Begum tells me the Villarreal and Begum Law Firm commissioned a study after hearing from clients who often ask whether it's the road design that causes crashes. Begum says that's often not the case. Crashes are a function of miles driven on a particular road. So the more travelers you have on a particular intersection or particular highway system, by virtue of numbers, you're going to have more accidents in those areas. So is he right about that? We took that question to one of the region's leading experts in civil engineering, UTSA professor Jose Weissman. He says road design only goes so far. I guess the reaction side is still in our hands, okay? Uh, and of course is influenced by uh, distractions and all kinds of uh, things that now we have inside our cabins uh, when we drive. Both Begum and Weissman agree that speed was likely the biggest factor in increase of serious injuries and fatalities on the roads last year, even though the actual number of crashes went down. Those emptier roads made it more tempting for drivers to speed. We have more info on this study at KSAT.com. Samuel King, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, walked out the door yesterday at home, and I swear I was back in Lubbock. <laughs> the wind was like, was whoa, something. the wind's whipping, the dust is thick, can't see yeah. across the... But look how calm our live cam is right now. Yeah, painting a very pretty picture, right? Or showing yeah. a very pretty picture. That dust moved in yesterday evening, fairly big plume of it from West Texas. Thankfully, it really moved through during the overnight hours and it was thinning out this morning. And as you saw, we've got blue skies, so that dust is well to our south now. And we've got a beautiful afternoon ahead. Let's check on the aquifer. It is down seven tenths of a foot in the past 24 hours. And in your pollen count, mold, hackberry and oak are low. But our source for our pollen count also reported some dust on the slide again. That was very early this morning. Uh, we'll take a look at what the rest of your Thursday has in store and get a sneak peek of your weekend coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Have you ever been to Lubbock during a dust storm? Not during a dust storm, mm -hmm. but I've you've been to Lubbock. And you've, you've missed, you gotta go during a dust storm. <laughs> oh, and then you go eat and like your mashed potatoes, you like have this, this texture to them. A texture. During a dust storm, yeah. There's, they, there's kind of an just, earthiness yeah, to it, exactly. maybe, yeah. is the way to put it. And that's the way it felt yesterday afternoon when I looked outside and went, whoa. Oh my gosh, I know my car when I was in college at Tech, it. I don't have it anymore, but for years after I was out of school, yep. I would open the door and in like the little crevices, there's this red dust just gets stuck everywhere. Uh, and yes, it was the dust from West Texas that paid us a visit yesterday evening and last night. Here are a few of your pictures that you sent in to us via KSAT Connect. The view at Canyon Lake is not a beautiful day unless you love West Texas dust in the air, your nose, your hair if you're like David and your mashed potatoes as well. Uh, and another view from uh, Colorado County there to our uh, northeast. Uh, yes, kind of hazy. This was, of course, not the same dust that we see sometimes during the summer months. That's the Saharan dust that moves all the way across the Atlantic. This was from West Texas. But as you can see out there right now, beautiful blue sky. That dust has been able to filter out, so it shouldn't be causing you any more issues on this Thursday. 64 now at the airport. Our dew point is low in the 20s. Beautiful day, absolutely wonderful. And we're gonna keep it going for several more days. Really the only thing that would be better than what we've got going out there right now would be some beneficial rain. 
We definitely need it. Drought monitor was updated today. Still shows a good portion of south and central Texas in some sort of drought. And in and around San Antonio, we've got a lot of moderate and severe drought. But in the southwest portion of the state there, far south Texas, exceptional drought is expanding. And that's the case out in west Texas as well. So some very dry earth out in west Texas. That's part of the reason why we saw that big plume of dust move in last night and uh, very early today. Again, that has cleared out. And there's a lot of sunshine all across the Lone Star State at this hour. The system that brought all that severe weather to the deep south yesterday, that's continuing to move northeast. Center of this low pressure system is kind of sitting right over the Kentucky Tennessee state line. There are a lot of rain up through a portion of the Great Lakes, pushing into places like New York and Boston. And there's still some ongoing severe weather down to the southeast across portions of uh, Florida and Georgia there. But again, we're on the very quiet side of this system, and we're actually going to see a really nice stretch of weather kicking in today and continuing all the way through the weekend. So your Friday afternoon, more sunshine, high temperatures tomorrow, back in the low 70s with dry air in place. We'll do it all over again on Saturday, not just here, but elsewhere across the Lone Star State. Sunny skies and very comfortable conditions. Now, as we get into Sunday, you'll notice a few more clouds starting to roll in, but they'll just be some fair weather clouds, uh, but it'll still be very comfortable out there, even through the end of the weekend with highs in the low to mid 70s. Now it was a bit chilly out there this morning. If you were up early, we started off in the upper 40s, but we're up to 64. Now we've got some upper 50s in the hill country and with this really dry air in place, check out these dew points 20s and 30s very dry air. Uh, we're going to continue to warm up really efficiently as we get into the rest of the afternoon. Still a touch breezy. We've got north northwest winds about 10 to 20 miles per hour for a lot of us, especially here in San Antonio and points off to the northeast. And it will stay a touch breezy at times today, but it's not going to be nearly as gusty as what we dealt with yesterday. So a little breeze, but some low humidity and really comfortable this afternoon with a high near 73 here in San Antonio. Now, as far as any rain chances go, we're going to have to wait to early next week for that to kick in. Any rain making energy will evade us all the way through the weekend, so it'll be really nice. It's not until late Monday night into Tuesday of next week that we get our next storm system, some rain making energy that will once again be moving in from West Texas. So that'll be Monday night into Tuesday uh, that you'll start to see rain chances kick in here, a chance for some isolated showers and storms. Until then, we've got a lot of sunshine over the next few days, guys. Very pretty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Still coming up, Jakob Pertl having a pretty good week. Spurs on a little road roll. Highlights are next. And the latest on Deshaun Watson's legal trouble coming up. Spurs road trip continuing last night in Chicago. Bulls sub-500 team. Spurs good against that kind of record going into last night. They were 10-4 and four versus teams below 500. First quarter, nothing was going right for San Antonio early. Just over five minutes to go. Spurs down 20-9. to nine. Kelvin Johnson lands on his right foot awkwardly, falls to the court, and he rolled that right ankle. He got some help up and then headed to the locker room. Moments later, Zach Levine picks off Lonnie Walker's pass, and there he goes. Watch that nasty-looking slam dunk. Spurs down 31-17 after one. Keldon return, 8-17 left in the first half. Bulls led by as many as 23. They were up 58-40 at halftime. Second half, here we go. Got the lead down to 13 after three. Fourth quarter, Keldon for the three. That cuts the lead to three, 80-77. Timeout, Bulls. Moments later, Johnson goes for the layup. SA down one, 80-79. That ends a 12-0 run to open up the quarter. Then on the break, Patty Mills to DeJounte Murray. Floater. Yep, 90-89 Spurs. That was part of a 17-0 run. Spurs got the lead 98-89. San Antonio comes back to win it 106-99. Monster game with 20 points and 16 boards from Jakob Pertl. It's great. Um, a lot of credit to our guards. They really got us going in that second half. Um, really picked up the energy on defense. We were pressing them the whole way. Got them to speed up their game and, and miss some shots. It was, it was really great to see how the, we came together as a team on the court. Spurs stay on the road, continue the trip tomorrow night in Cleveland, 630 Quicken Loans Arena against the Cavs. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Houston, Texas quarterback Deshaun Watson now facing a second lawsuit from another massage therapist. Two lawsuits in less than 24 hours. The first lawsuit was filed Tuesday night in Houston by a female masseuse who alleges inappropriate conduct by Watson in her home in Houston back in March of 2020. 
The second lawsuit was filed yesterday and claims that Watson exposed himself to an unnamed woman during a massage session at the Houstonian Hotel Club and Spa in late August 2020. And the lawsuits were filed by Houston lawyer Tony Busby, who said on Instagram, a third lawsuit, now six to be filed against Watson. The quarterback responded on Twitter to the first lawsuit, saying he rejected a baseless six-figure settlement demand and that this is about clearing his name, and he looks forward to doing that. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> That's kind of an awkward. We'll just go to the next one. The Biden yeah. administration is facing a lawsuit while 21 states have decided to sue over the Keystone XL pipeline. And hearing loss can affect different parts of your body. Still ahead, how to protect your ears from exposure to loud noises. The 21-year-old suspect in the Atlanta shootings will not be facing a judge today as originally scheduled. ABC's Elwin Lopez reports there was no reason given for his first appearance in court now being canceled. Mourners turning out at vigils overnight to remember the victims of Tuesday's deadly shooting rampage. Authorities say 21-year-old Robert Aaron Long is accused of murdering eight people in three separate shootings at spas across Metro Atlanta. Some guy came in and shot the gun, so everybody heard the gunshot. Six of the victims were Asian women. Long, a white man, told investigators he did not have a racial motive, but police said it was too early to exclude that possibility. We need to make sure we have any Asian spies. We need to be checking on them. Officials noted these attacks come amid a wave of anti-Asian crimes. We are not about to get into victim blaming victim shaming here. Authorities say Long had previously been a customer of those businesses. He apparently has an issue, uh, what he considers a, a, a sex fiction. It was Long's family who helped police after identifying him in these surveillance pictures. We were contacted by uh, members of the family uh, <laughs> indicating that that may be their, their uh, son. Investigators say they eventually caught up with him south of Atlanta by tracking his cell phone. They believe he was planning to continue his killing spree in Florida. Atlanta police are in the early stages of the investigation, and as of now, they're not ruling out hatred as a motive for these shootings. This, as Asian American advocates and lawmakers are set to testify before Congress today, including actor Daniel Day Kim, on the rise in hatred in the Asian Americans and Pacific Islander community. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. Russian President Vladimir Putin says President Joe Biden's remarks about him being a killer reflect the past and current problems with the United States. This comes after statements President Biden made in an interview. President Biden agreeing that Vladimir Putin was, quote, a killer, unquote, and said in 2011 he told Putin he didn't have a soul. The president also said Putin will, quote, pay a price for trying to undermine the 2020 U.S. election. A Kremlin spokesperson called the remarks unprecedented and described U.S. and Russian relations as very bad. Meantime, 21 states are suing the Biden administration over the Keystone XL pipeline. The lawsuit claims the president did not have the authority to revoke a permit for the pipeline. Biden did that through executive action on his first day in office as part of his promise to combat climate change. The planned pipeline would carry oil from the Canadian tar sands into the U.S. However, the oil industry and Republican leaders slammed Biden's move, saying it would cost thousands of jobs. The lawsuit is led by the attorney generals of Texas as well as Montana. Turning now to the economy, the number of Americans seeking unemployment benefits rose to 770,000. That's a jump from 725,000 last week. These numbers are from the Labor Department's latest report, and the increase in unemployment numbers is a sign that layoffs remain high, even as much as the economy steadily recovers. And four hurricane names will no longer be used. The Hurricane Committee says Dorian, Laura, Etta, and Iota are getting retired from the rotating list of names used for Atlantic storms. Officials say the decision was based on the death and destruction caused by those hurricanes. Dorian and Laura will be replaced with Dexter and Leah, respectively. The committee added that Greek alphabet-based names won't be used again due to the distraction and confusion they caused to people.
threatened by the hurricanes. More than 90 hurricane names from the Atlanta basin have been retired since 1953. The prospect of more tornadoes across the Deep South has forecasters advising residents to take extra precautions. As ABC's Victor Akiendo reports, no injuries have been reported so far. 16 tornadoes reported here in Alabama alone. You can see the massive debris field behind me here in Chilton County. And to my left, this was a bedroom. You can see the bed right here. There's a dresser behind me. This whole structure, it just collapsed. It was separated a few feet from the house as well. The National Weather Service will have to get a team out here on the ground to survey all the damage to determine just how strong this tornado was. The house, you can see it sustained a good amount of damage as well. All the debris in front of it, the windows blown out, the roof, it was peeled right off. But despite all the devastation around us here, we just checked with the Chilton County Dispatch and they tell us that they're unaware of any reported injuries. Definitely some good news to share. Victor Okendo, ABC News, Chilton County, Alabama. Outside with live cam, beautiful day. We go through these stretches where we get four or five days like this in a row and it's like, man, you get to just love it. It's really nice uh, and it was pretty nice yesterday. I know it was windy and then we had the dust in the evening, but compared to what the Deep South was dealing with yesterday, our weather was very, very nice. Look at all the severe weather reports that came out of the Deep South yesterday. This was a mix of tornado reports, hail reports, wind damage reports, and you can see that they extend all the way from Louisiana through Mississippi, Alabama, and even into a portion of the Florida Panhandle. Uh, tornado reports were numerous as well. A few in Louisiana, Mississippi, but most of them, of course, did fall in the central and western portion of Alabama yesterday. But as uh, you saw in that report, thankful that there have been no injuries reported so far. Today's severe weather risk has been moved farther to the east along the east coast here through the Carolinas down into Georgia and a portion of northern Florida. Right now there is a tornado watch box, this red box here that extends from Jacksonville up through a portion of South Carolina. It does look like we've got a few severe storms moving through the Sunshine State at this hour, but that system will continue to move east and we are on the sunny side of that storm system. It is absolutely beautiful out there, still a little breezy, but not nearly as gusty as it was yesterday. And thankfully all that dust has been able to filter out and we've got blue skies as far as the eye can see. This type of weather will continue for the next few days. We'll talk more about what you can expect tomorrow and for the upcoming weekend coming up in just a bit. Guys. Thank you, Katie. Tone it down, at least for the sake of your ears. ABC's Andrew Dimbert explains how hearing loss can affect more than just your ears. Whether you're rocking out at a concert, listening to cicadas on a summer night, or hearing car horns in traffic, noise surrounds our daily lives. But too much loud noise can be harmful. Hearing loss affects about one out of every eight persons in the working population in the United States. And hearing loss affects more than just your ears. According to the CDC, hearing loss and tinnitus, or ringing in the ears, is associated with cognitive impairments, heart problems, difficulty sleeping, depression, and anxiety. Work-related hearing loss is largely caused by loud workplace noise and chemicals that damage the inner ear. Since there are workers in every industry that are exposed to loud workplace noise or toxic chemicals, knowing how to protect our ears is important. If you must raise your voice to speak to someone at arm's length, then the noise is likely at a harmful level. Wearing proper ear protection, reducing time in noisy areas, and keeping earphone volumes at a safe level promote good ear health. And just as 2020 taught us that social distancing is a good practice, distance between workers and the source of noises should be maintained. So before you jam out, think ears first. With this Medical Minute, I'm Andrew Dimbert. Theme parks all around the world beginning to reopen, where you can find the latest attractions still ahead in Cheddar. Interest rates are remaining at low, record lows, in fact. After the break, why the Federal Reserve is ready to adjust the rates if risks emerge. Hello, everyone. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar. 
The price of Bitcoin holding on to yesterday's gains, hovering around $58,000 this morning. The crypto has been on a wild ride over the last few weeks, topping $60,000 for the first time last weekend. Many investors want to get easier access to the crypto. That's another sign that Bitcoin is becoming more mainstream. Meanwhile, Super Nintendo World finally opening its doors in Osaka, Japan today. This after its debut was pushed back due to the pandemic. The theme park was initially expected to open last summer, but that date was moved back several times due to rising cases of COVID-19 in Japan. Now that the park is finally open, they're going to limit the amount of guests to 10,000 people per day, and they'll also require everybody to wear a mask at all times. And California's theme parks might sound a little quieter when they reopen next month. The California Attractions and Parks Association announced a new rule that guests are not allowed to scream on roller coasters. Now, this is, of course, to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. And a bit more consumer news for you. The Federal Reserve left interest rates untouched, keeping them at near zero. The central bank said it will continue with its use of various tools to support the still recovering U.S. economy. However, the Fed also said it is prepared to, quote, adjust the stance of monetary policy as appropriate if risks emerge, unquote. Those risks include a potential spike in inflation, which is expected to move up in the coming months. Consumer price inflation due to the reopening of the economy would force the Fed to raise interest rates. The Federal Reserve does not expect hikes, though, this year. The largest owned union bank in the U.S. is also the first to endorse reparations for African Americans. Amalgamated Bank has endorsed H.R. 40, its legislation that would create a commission to develop reparation proposals for African Americans. The New York-based bank is known for supporting progressive causes. It was the first bank to advocate for gun violence control and increasing the minimum wage to $20. We're looking at a beautiful day out there. Not quite as windy, not quite as dusty, but just as pretty as yesterday. Oh, yes. And this is going to continue all the way through the upcoming weekend. So if you're making your weekend plans, it's going to be great out there. Good weather to spend some time outdoors. The only thing I wish we could get going is some better chances of rain because we do need it. The aquifer is down a good bit today, almost a foot, seven tenths of a foot to 660 even. And in your pollen count, we've got low counts of mold, hackberry and oak, thankfully for now, but also reported on the slide this morning, heavy dust. Now a lot of that has filtered out. Um, and as we head into the second half of the day, that dust will not be an issue anymore. We'll take another look at your forecast coming up. We're enjoying some pretty weather out there, but yeah, we could use some rain. I know. Uh, it seems like these past couple of storm systems that have come through, we've been so far south, we're on the tail end, and that doesn't allow us to really cash in on any much-needed rainfall. Coming up in just a couple minutes, we'll look at our next setup for some rain chances. Low temperatures this morning, pretty close to average for this time of year, but it was cool out there. You definitely needed a light jacket, but... As we head into this afternoon, really no more jacket necessary. We're starting to warm up here really nicely at 68 in Laredo, 64 at the airport and 61 in Kerrville. We'll continue to warm through the middle of the afternoon. A lot of us will see your high temperature max out in the low 70s. So right around 73 here in San Antonio, mid 70s out farther to the west, closer to Del Rio. Some upper 60s near 70 in the hill country, but very comfortable sunny skies. A little bit breezy this afternoon. North northwest winds will hang in that 10 to 20 mile per hour range, especially through about sunset, but it is not nearly as gusty as it was yesterday. Our wind gusts this afternoon are up near 25, getting close to 30 miles per hour in spots, and uh, that's about as high as they'll go today. So a little breezy, but again, not as windy as it was yesterday. And as we head into the next several days, our wind gusts will continue to trend downward. We could certainly see some wind gusts up closer to 20, 25 miles per hour at times on Friday. Otherwise, our winds will really relax, and that's going to play into what's going to be a really nice weekend coming up weather-wise. So for the rest of your Thursday, again, we're looking at highs topping out near 73 here in San Antonio. Plenty of sunshine now after sunset as our winds start to relax just a little bit. Those temperatures will fall off fairly quickly. We should be near 60 by 9 p.m. 
down into the mid 50s as we get closer to midnight and that's going to set us up for another pretty cool start to the day on Friday. Spring is very close. The official start of spring, the equinox is at 437 AM on Saturday, so technically less than two days until the official start of spring. And if you're like me, when you think spring, you, you, you think showers, even some thunderstorms. We need the March and April showers to bring the May flowers, right? Unfortunately, looking ahead to our rain chances, they're not too impressive by early next week, really Monday night into Tuesday. That's when our next storm system moves through and that'll give us likely just another glancing blow at a couple of showers and storms. The rain is desperately needed at this point. Here's the drought monitor last Thursday. I'm going to fast forward to today's update. So things have gotten a little worse. Unfortunately, some of the gaps we had in there were filled in as a lack of rainfall continues to create drought, uh, drought conditions across South and Central Texas. So looking ahead to any potential rainmakers, they're going to hold off again until after the weekend into early next week. These bright colors you see here, that's some good shower and thunderstorm making energy. This will move into West Texas late Monday, likely moving over our area overnight Monday into the early morning hours of Tuesday. This could be like those past couple of systems we've seen such that we're on the tail end of the energy. And so that only leaves us with some isolated chances of rain and that will kick in late Monday into Tuesday. There is hope by middle part of next week. We're talking about some slightly better rain chances. We'll keep a close eye on that for you. In the meantime, next couple of days, it's going to be really, really nice. I hope you're able to get out and enjoy guys. So if golfers can handle today and tomorrow, then, then they're good. Oh, I think, yeah. A brutal day for golf yesterday. Yeah, no. unless you're hitting with the wind. With the wind, yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. You're good. And you're amazing. <laughs> the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival being postponed again. How long concert goers will have to wait to see some of their favorite bands back in action? Music festival goers are going to have to wait to attend Coachella. The Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival being postponed again. No official date yet on the festival's website, but sources say it'll be moving from October to April of 2022. Even though promoters are planning to start hosting concerts again in the summertime, Coachella is more complicated due to the amount of people who attend and the COVID protocols of California. This would be the fourth delay for the festival due to the pandemic. Demi, Demi Lovato fans will now be able to listen to her new album in just a few weeks. The singer shared on Instagram that her new album, Dancing with the Devil, The Art of Starting Over, is going to be released on April 2nd. It'll be a companion piece to her four-part YouTube documentary series that will air later on in a month. This is Lovato's first album since Tell Me You Love Me, released back in 2017. The long-awaited director's cut of a superhero epic begins streaming today. CNN's Rick Damagella brings us a look at Zack Snyder's Justice League. I have a second chance. I am not going to waste it. It's a second chance for heroes and villains to have their stories told as the director intended in Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's uh, been an incredibly cathartic experience for myself and my crew and my family and just like all of us, the fan community. Whoever thought that we would be here, I never did. Um, I, and, and to that I do owe the fans a huge debt of gratitude for their dedication and their relentless pursuit of this. It's been a long journey. It's a journey for these characters, but I think, you know, we get to see the Justice League become the heroes that we know and love them to be. I think in a world right now where it's been a hard year for everyone, you know, we could use some heroes in our life. This one will be mine. I belong to no one. Completing the movie required an enormous amount of visual effects and filming a new scene with Jared Leto and Ben Affleck during the pandemic. We had 2,650 visual effects shots. Visual effects and a little bit of tightening and tweaking of the uh, cut. And then uh, that small percentage of shooting we did, um, which we did over two days. Isn't that right? Batman. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. SA Live making a recipe for Lent today. And they're checking out the Bouldering Gym that's down the street. Oh, that yeah. Sounds we'll see you. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> but not us. We're going to eat. <laughs> yes. But if you're looking for a healthy option for Lent, we've got one. Yes, indeed. Tim McDermott from The Good Kind is here. And uh, we are making fish tacos, yes. but also gluten-free, right? Gluten-free fried fish tacos. Now, somebody might say gluten-free. It's like, eh, but uh. it doesn't taste like it. But you said it doesn't like well, ours do. You, nobody would know that they're gluten-free. Okay. We and just switched up the flours. Okay, and we're also going to wash it down with a very special cocktail, right? We are. We actually have three botanical cocktails. One of them we call our anti-inflammatory drink. It's made with fresh turmeric root and ginger root and vodka. So, you're so healthy, it's the healthy drink. You're vodka. healthy drinking this. <laughs> Yay! That's our story. We're sticking to it. <laughs> and Jen is rocking out, sort of, kind of. <laughs> That's right, we are taking you to a family friendly gym that you, is all about the bouldering. And yes, I'm going to give it a try, but there's some experts here that are going to show me how it's really done. That's coming up. Sleep. Back to you guys. I just want to keep on. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at how yummy that looks. But guess what? That, that's not for food. you, right? Well, you could, but I it's mean, actually yeah. for the dogs. Okay, Maricela Martinez from South Paw. Waggery, you made this for the dogs? Yes, they're homemade, human-grade ingredients, organic ingredients, looking just as cute as human cookies do. All right. Special. And, wow. Yes, and we're going to show you some items you're going to need for your next big hike with your yeah. dog, right? Make That's them right. carry their own stuff there for <laughs> once, the dog. And also, activities. What are What's one activity that a million dollars couldn't get you to do? Ooh. Mm. Mm. I, I, I'm going to have to think. We will. Yes. We'll think about that. <laughs> that and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live in just a couple of minutes. Stick around.